Hollyhocks by Jean Blewett, read for LibriVox.org, by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Say, did you ever go to a place where nobody lived you cared about, and just go wandering up and down into all the great big stores and out, and meeting such heaps and heaps of folks that pass you by with never a nod till you got to feeling though and though just right down lonesome and most outlawed and you tell yourself if someone said will you have this place you say no thanks i wouldn't live here for all the world give me the fields and the brooks and banks why the stuff that grows in your lots here can't touch one side of our country stuff you have things tended to right up fine but nature is sweet though maybe rough and your blossoms aren't half so nice nor your creepin vines nor growin grass why cause ours swim in the sun all day and yours stretch their necks to see him pass so you try somehow to pass the time a wandering up and a wandering down so sick of yourself but sicker still of the folks you meet in that old town such dressy folks that don't care a snap not knowing you from adam off ox and by an you lift up your eyes and see such a clump of hollyhocks and holding their own in some grand place with their shiny leaves spread in the sun nodding so friendly seeming to say come in old neighbor and share the fun there's no flower nicer it seems to me there's nothing prettier grows nor blows though some folks call them old-fashioned things a thinking them homely i suppose but you come across them some fine day when you're so homesick you can't get air enough for your lungs down through your throat because of the lump that's stoppin there and say wouldn't wonder a bit in you felt a mist come in your eyes at sight of the bright familiar things the nicest flowers under the skies for they set me thinkin of a house that stands by itself among the trees with a big white porch and straggling walk bordered by just such flowers as these till you hear the old familiar sounds the chirpin the buzzin soft and low and sniff the breath that comes with the wind from the ripe red clover down below till a big warm feelin swamps your heart you're not so lonesome there on their stalks are friendly a plenty smilin at you the pretty old-fashioned hollyhocks folks write of pansy rose and fern but if i were poet and could rhyme I wouldn't bother with common things. I'd write of hollyhocks every time. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Miscreant by Jean Blewett. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. He glares out from the gathering dusk, With furtive glancing eye, A creature hunted, and at war, With every passer-by. Such a malignant face he turns, You feel a sudden fear, Born of the knowledge which proclaims, An evil thing is near. A man goes by, ah, mark that scowl, A woman young and fair, evil the look he bends on her 
then comes a gallant pair a laddie tall and by his side a baby girl who cries good night out to the miscreant and laughs upon his eyes at strife is he with all the world but for a moment's space something akin to tenderness flares up in that dark face end of poem this recording is in the public domain her birthday by jean blewett read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c your birthday my girl with the tender eyes and the dower of youth and zest it is kind of heaven to give us this day when the world is looking its best when the crimson roses are all abloom with their sisters of paler grace when the sun makes warm and the dew makes glad each velvety beautiful face when the breeze which comes seems a heavy breath from the lungs of the earth o'ergrown with the fairest things and the sweetest things that ever was seen or known when the bird has an added note of pride in each carol of joy he sings do you know can you guess my pretty mate and the wee things under my wings your birthday my girl with the tender eyes and the fair young cheek and brow your birthday my girl with the smiling lips what things shall i wish for you now come close put your two hands into my own while i wish you a happy year while i wish you the best that heaven can give to a maiden so sweet and dear while i wish you love with never a stint for the riches of love are great while i wish that shadows may flee your path and the glorious sunshine wait while i wish you the happiness full and deep the gladness and brightness of life a place in your heart for the white dove of peace but none for the whisper of strife your birthday my girl with the tender eyes and the shimmering braids of hair i say as i look through a mist of tears it is good to be young and fair it is well to lean on the father's arm love forces the words in the flood god bless my girl with the tender eyes god bless her and keep her good end of poem this recording is in the public domain slander by jean blewett read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c the man who with the breath lent him by heaven speaks words that soil the whiteness of life is but an assassin for death is given as surely by the tongue as by the knife he does the devil's basest work no less who deals in calamities who throws the mire on snowy robes whose hem he dare not press his foul lips too the pity of it liar yet half believed by such as deem the good or evil but the outcome of a mood o slanderer if fierce imps meet in hell for converse when the long day's toil is through of you they have this worthy thing to tell he does the work we are ashamed to do end of poem this recording is in the public domain summer holidays by jean blewett sung for librivox dot org by iswa in belgium in august two thousand and seventeen school's out 
They cried to happy whites. School's out for such a while. The old bell won't ding dong today and make us run a mile. It seems too good, no lessons now, to tire us right out. We've not a single thing to do, but run and play and shout. We're going fishing in the creek, with brand new hook and line. We're going hunting in the woods, our holidays are fine. We're going to wade out in the pond and scare the ducks and drake. We're going haying in the field and swimming in the lake. We're going to jump, we're going to sing and yell and make a noise. Cause holidays come from the sky for tired out shutter boys that mean old bell that called so loud each time that it was wrong come right straight in and hurry up has just to hold its tongue end of poem this recording is in the public domain Violet by Jean Blewett Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. O oh, wrinkled, withered little flower, You were so pretty and so blue The day that you were given me By Mariana, fair and true. Angry and jealous had I been That fragrant budding day in spring, Strange that a man should let his mind be vexed by some light, simple thing. She had gone walking with my friend, a splendid fellow with a face, as handsome as Apollo's own, and figure full of manly grace. And seeing that he gave to her what seemed to me a tender gaze, and that she was in happy mood, my jealousy was all ablaze. I called her traitor in my heart. Was she not mine by every right? Had I not held her to my breast and whispered things one starlit night? I strode away to where the waves rushed on the beach with sullen roar. She cared not for me. Why should I think fondly of her any more? Yet when she softly called my name, my heart beat quick with love and wrath, and though the twilight soft and dim, I saw her coming down the path. Then love was dumb, and anger spake. The eyes of her grew proud and shy. I called her heartless and coquette. What but a jealous fool was I? She turned to leave me, then I grew, ashamed of all my bitter speech. But she seemed now so far from me, I could not hope her grace to reach. Wait, Mariana, wait and say farewell to one you hold in scorn. I cried, and give to him, I pray, one of the flowers you have worn. O Violet, she lifted you up with her slender fingertips laid you for one brief moment's space against the redness of her lips then gave you softly to my hand o violet so sweet and shy in all god's universe there was no happier man i wot than i end of poem this recording is in the public domain My Lady of the Silver Tongue by Jean Blewett Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. My Lady of the Silver Tongue, 
do you not feel a thrill of shame the woman is so fair and young why seek to steal away her fame nay never mind that haughty stare for you and i must measure swords to tell you to your face i dare a lie lurked in your pretty words did you not say a while ago i am her friend in earnest tone and soft that voice of yours and low i am her friend when all is done as though a friend a doubt would fling and evil tongues to wagging start i am her friend ah there the sting no friend will grieve and hurt a heart your eyes are very warm and kind and sweet the smile upon your lips i read the truth i am not blind false are you to your finger tips and i would rather be to-day the slandered woman fair and young than be yourself so proud and gay my lady of the silver tongue a friend's heart holds no wronging doubt no envy meaner far than hate with tenderness it pieces out the small shortcomings and the great so when you slander blush for shame or to some gossip's tale attend i pray you take some other name and never say i am her friend for loyalty is not a jest no sweeter word is said or sung take time to learn that truth is best my lady of the silver tongue end of poem this recording is in the public domain Sweeping to the Sea by Jean Blewett Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. O river, sweeping to the sea, how clear your waters are, so clear they mirror faithfully each fleecy cloud and star. O river running to the sea, how fresh the breath you fling, as on you speed right merrily from winds that chase and sing end of poem this recording is in the public domain minerva's essay by jean blewett read for LibriVox.org. read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c men give more frankness and less flattery so read minerva from her essay fine men give more frankness and less flattery much emphasis she laid upon this line we are no foolish children to be fed on empty words of unearned praise forsooth too long in such poor ways have we led give us no compliment give us the truth think not a woman pines to hear you tell how beautiful her form how fair her face think not she whispers to herself tis well when you proclaim her rich in every grace you think to please her ah sir vain your dream when next such fulsome praises you may speak mark well her eyes and read their scornful gleam and note the angry blush on brow and cheek be fair speak out your thoughts as they may rise nor seek to hide them since the truth is grand all praise unmerited we do despise if you could read our mind and understand men give more frankness and less flattery remember we are neither dull nor blind men give more frankness and less flattery if you would win the trust of womankind much marvelled i at dear minerva's lay 
but thought she truly meant each earnest word and so neglected telling her straight away how much her genius had my bosom stirred neglected telling her that if two wings but grew out from her shoulders soft and white fair would she be as seraph mild that sings the songs of love in paradise to-night neglected telling her the flowers she wore droop with the heat of their own jealousy and whisper to each others o'er and o'er ah how much sweeter is this maid than we she begged for frankness from all men from me for this her wondrous eloquence was poured so afterwards when she did question me i foolish man confessed that i was bored and when she showed her gown of palest blue shook for me all its dainty ruffles out i would not praise it though i wanted to her red lips straight took on a pretty pout did not we graduates look very nice she asked and patted one rebellious curl frankness not flattery i murmured twice let me remember it my own dear girl i've seen you looking lovelier i said i like your hair best when it softly flows not piled in one big bunch upon your head the powder showed quite plainly on your nose who was it said oh inconsistency thy name is woman surely he was right i spoke my thoughts refrain from flattery lo for reward comes this brief note to-night i think to longer be engaged to you would be a foolish thing and very wrong postscript gray says he dreamed the whole night through of me and my essay wise and strong if you should call to-night at eight pray bring my notes and and the photo and the curl i will return your presence and your ring to think that you should grow into a churl i'm going to tell minerva when we meet that it was just a little joke of mine and never more my cure is quite complete will i believe a woman's essay fine end of poem this recording is in the public domain to the queen by jean blewett read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c we send thee greetings on this morn in may long live the queen right fervently we pray we daughters of this country young and fair join all our voices singing songs of thee O oh, may the words ring clearly on the air and reach the island cradled in the sea our queen lo as the words a thrill of pride of tenderness and trust springs into life our queen who rules so well her kingdom wide our queen so soft in peace so bold in strife our queen the love of loyal hearts we give we join our voices and we proudly say god bless the sweetest woman and long live the greatest ruler in the world today end of poem this recording is in the public domain in the old church by jean blewett read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c the fine new kirk is finished wife the old has had its day tis like ourselves a trifle worn and out of date and gray stained windows and a tower high 
I like not such a show. Beside the cost is something great, and money does not grow. Now when they come to me for help, I'm going to tell them plain, that since they've built to please themselves, they'll ask my help in vain. Then sat the woman at his side, tis meet God's house should be, as good a one as we can give, she answered tenderly. And we who've worshipped all the years in that old church so grey, should go with songs and thankful hearts into the new one to-day. For think of all the precious hours we have had over there, the hours of penance and tears, the hours of peace and prayer. I went to-day to say good-bye, and as I stood alone, the memory of blessings shared came to me one by one. I heard the message from the word, the sermon good and wise. I heard the songs of love and hope ring clearly to the skies. And looking over the pew we've worshipped in for years, I seem to see so many things, to see them through my tears. I saw us sitting there when we were young and glad and strong, or we had learned that sorrow lends a sweetness to life's song when every golden sabbath day found us in love with life the world was fair and god was good and we were man and wife one pretty far-off summer morn my dim eyes seemed to see a morn when i sat by your side our firstborn on my knee his fair head lay upon my arm and rich was i and proud I whispered in the master's ear things spoken not aloud, and then our other bonny lads grew plain unto my eyes, and Belle, our lassie fair and good, our lassie sweet and wise, I felt again her little hand clasped tightly in my own. A mother holds her daughter dear, and I had but the one, my soft-eyed one my loving one with braids of yellow hair ah me i could not help but know the little one was fair in the old church i thought upon the hour, hour of grief and pain of loneliness she went away and came not back again when broken-hearted neath the loss we bowed beneath the rod there close about us in that hour we felt the arm of god i saw us older grown and bent each tall son in his place i saw the minister who stood with heaven in his face his sworn old face we loved so well his eyes that seemed to see the golden light that lights the shore of god's eternity and yet how simple was his heart how kindly was his way and how he cared for all his flock, nor wearied night nor day. If one strayed far, he followed it, and won it back to fold. If one fell down, he lifted it, with tenderness untold. He fell asleep, his labor done, how sweet must be the rest. Of one who made his model this, the Lord shall have my best. Goodbye, O church! Goodbye, I said, and left its portals wide. And then I turned and looked upon the new church just beside. Upon its windows tall and stained, the yellow sunbeams played. It stood, the temple of the Lord, in loveliness arrayed. I thought, she said, and stroked his hand, of one who takes his rest. I seem to hear his deep voice say, The Lord shall have my best. The sun crept lower in the sky, The world lay sweet and fair. A bird trilled softly from its throat A song that was a prayer. The old man looked up at his wife, With tears his cheeks were wet. 
a there are many things he said we may not dear forget we're growing old wife like the day our sun sinks in the west i'll say with him we both love well the lord shall have my best end of poem this recording is in the public domain September by Jean Blewett, read for LibriVox.org, by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. September comes across the hills, her blue veil softly flowing, her flagons deep of wine she spills, and sets the old world glowing. Yon robin's piping her a tune, how runs her carol tender. I knew you once as pretty June, when you were young and slender. And though you've grown a gracious thing, full-blossomed, grand and stately, I still can see a hint of spring, your use but left you lately. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Spring o'er the year by Jean Blewett, read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Spring o'er the year, spring o'er the year, was there ever a song so gay, as the song the meadowlark sings to me, when we meet in the fields each day. Spring o'er the year, spring o'er the year, then pauses a moment to look at soft green leaves on shrub and tree, and buttercups gay in the brook. Spring o'er the year, spring o'er the year, no more weather gloomy and sad. Spring o'er the year, spring o'er the year, aren't you glad, aren't you glad? Spring o'er the year, spring o'er the year, isn't it blue, the sky above? Watch em, watch em, these mates of mine, building their nests and making love. Spring o'er the year, spring o'er the year, ho, I sing it morning and night. Never were meadows quite so green, never were posies quite so bright. Spring o'er the year, spring o'er the year, out rings his song so sweet and shrill, its gladness catches you unawares with its gurgle and laugh and thrill. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Mildred by Jean Blewett Read for LibriVox.org by Alexandra Selenius My lady Mildred tells me oft that she is mistress now of me. Her voice is very sweet and soft but ah, an autocrat is she. Go, say the red lips, and I go. Come, and I hasten to her side. Her warm smile sets my heart aglow. Her quaintness is my joy and pride. I used to say in phrases fine that I was master of myself. The proud boast is no longer mine. I'm subject to a willful elf. My Mildred with a rose-leaf face, A tyrant spirit sways your breast. For humbly, though I sue your grace, You will not grant a moment's rest. I've served you for a whole long year, The woman new has come to stay. But tell me, now, have you no fear That I will mutiny some day? You give yourself a lofty air, your throne an ill-used father's knee. Now worry fly, slink off dull care, I have my girl, and she has me. My lady Mildred, without doubt, Your tender eyes are full of mirth, And by and by your laugh rings out, The gladdest sound in all the earth. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
The Old Valentine by Jean Blewett, read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. I sent my sweetheart a Valentine on one St. Valentine's Day, a long time ago, when my hair was brown. Ah, now it is sprinkled with gray. My sweetheart was pretty as she could be. A wild rose bloomed in each cheek. Her auburn hair rippled down to her waist. Her eyes were tender and meek. And, oh, my sweetheart was dear to me, though nobody could have guessed. From my careless glance or my careless word, the tenderness in my breast. I sent my sweetheart a valentine, a flowery and foolish thing all covered with blue forget-me-nots and cupids gay on the wing two hearts pierced through a ruffle of lace a knot of ribbon a dove and better than all a space whereon i could write a message of love so burning the midnight oil i wrote with infinite patience and care this one earnest verse for rhyming came hard to send to my lady fair i love you i love you with all my heart and fain would i call you mine my mary my darling my beautiful girl let me be your valentine this yellow old page from the book of youth was put in my hand to-day as i growled our tom has fallen in love in an nonsensical way he is making a fool of himself ha ha he is writing poetry now to his anna's lips and his anna's hair his anna's beautiful brow why what rubbish is this i asked my wife a portly but sweet-faced dame who smilingly showed me the verse underneath which i had written my name Shamefaced, I read it again and again. Let me confess to a truth. I felt like disowning the yellow thing that belonged to the days of youth. Till I pictured myself an excited lad, penning the words of care, knowing her answer would fill my heart with rapture or dark despair. It was yesterday who says we are old. I do says mary my wife but age has nothing to do with it since the choosing was done for life i bowed my gray head over her hand my sweetheart i whispered low on this valentine's day i tender you the verse written long ago i love you i love you with all my heart and fain would i call you mine my Mary, my darling, my beautiful girl, let me be your valentine. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Boy of the House by Jean Blewett Read for LibriVox.org By Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. He was the boy of the house, you know, a jolly and rollicking lad. He was never tired and never sick, and nothing could make him sad. If he started to play at sunrise, not a rest would he take at noon. No day was so long from beginning to end, but his bedtime came too soon. Did someone urge that he make less noise? he would say with a saucy grin why one boy alone doesn't make much stir i'm sorry i isn't a twin there's two of twins oh it must be fun to go double at everything to holler by twos and to run by twos to whistle by twos and to sing his laugh was something to make you glad so brimful was it of joy a conscience he had perhaps in his breast but it never troubled the boy you met him out in the garden path 
with the terrier at his heels you knew by the shout he held you with how happy a youngster feels the maiden auntie was half distraught at his tricks as the day went by the most mischievous child in the world she said with a shrug and a sigh his father owned that her words were true and his mother declared each day was putting wrinkles into her face and was turning her brown hair gray his grown-up sister referred to him as a trouble a trial a grief the way he ignored all rules she said was something beyond belief but it never troubled the boy of the house he reveled in clatter and din and had only one regret in the world that he hadn't been born a twin there's nobody making a noise today there's nobody stamping the floor there's an awful silence upstairs and down there's crape on the wide hall door the terrier's whining out in the sun where's my comrade he seems to say turn your plaintive eyes away little dog there's no frolic for you to-day the freckled-faced girl from the house next door is sobbing her young heart out don't cry little girl you'll soon forget to miss the laugh and the shout the grown-up sister is kissing his face and calling him darling and sweet the maiden aunt is holding the shoes that he wore on his restless feet how strangely quiet the little form with the hands on the bosom crossed not a fold not a flower out of place not a short curl rumpled and tossed so solemn and still the big house seems no laughter no racket no din no startling shriek no voice piping out i'm sorry i isn't a twin there's a man and a woman pale with grief as the wearisome moments creep oh the loneliness touches everything the boy of the house is asleep end of poem this recording is in the public domain For he was Scotch, and so was she, by Jean Blewett, read for LibriVox.org, by Alexandra Selenius. They were a couple well content, with what they earned and what they spent, cared not a whit for style's decree, for he was Scotch, and so was she, and oh, they loved to talk of Burns, their lightsome, tender Bobby Burns, they never wearied of his song, he never sang a note too strong one little fault could neither see for he was scotch and so was she they loved to read of men who stood and gave for country life and blood who held their fate so dear a thing they scorned to yield it to a king a proud of such things they well might be for he was scotch and so was she from neighbours broil they kept away no liking for such things had they and oh each had a canny mind each could be deaf and dumb and blind of words nor pens were none too free for he was scotch and so was she i would not have you think this pair went on in weather always fair for well you know in married life will come sometimes to jar and strive they couldn't always just agree for he was scotch and so was she but near of heart they ever kept until at close of life they slept just this to say when all was past they loved each other to the last the loving yet in heaven may be for he was scotch and so was she end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Legend of Love by Jean Blewett, read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. There's a cup on the very topmost shelf of the cupboard built in the wall. 
on one side a vine is traced on the delf with forget-me-nots blue and small on the other the words stand boldly up that were once a pride and joy for a legend it bears this old-fashioned cup which runs for a good little boy twas brought by a mother with eyes as blue as forget-me-nots pretty and shy when youth was her portion and love was true and the days went merrily by on the cottage floor where the sunbeams crept played her own sturdy lad of three and but yesterday he smiled and slept such a pretty babe on her knee he followed her down to the garden gate on her way to the little town now hurry right back and don't you be late he said with a pout and a frown he must have some toys for the christmas tide so she brought him a tiny sled and a nice little box of sweets beside to go into his mouth so red was there anything else she asked herself she could buy for the laddie small it was then she saw the cup of delft which stands on the shelf in the wall for a good little boy ah that meant him with a face as sweet as a rose he is good she said and her eyes grew dim from his curly head to his toes and she carried her treasures one by one to the cottage down in the lane where the winter sunbeams brightly shone on his face at the window pane he was proud of the sleigh with its jingling bells and the box was a thing of joy but the cup is best he said for it tells that i'm such a good little boy oh poor little mother your eyes so blue faded out with the wash of tears oh poor little mother your heart so true it broke with the weight of years and there on the very topmost shelf the old-fashioned cup it has stood since a day long ago when she owned to herself that her boy was no longer good there is dust on it now but believe me dear it was once a proud and joy with its legend of love so bright and so clear which runs for a good little boy end of poem this recording is in the public domain Our Father by Jean Bluitt, sung for LibriVox.org by Iswa in Belgium in August 2017. Teach us, dear Lord, all that it means to say the words, Our Father, when we kneel to pray. Our Father, thou then every child of thine is by the bond a brother lord of mine teach us dear lord all that it means to say thy will be done when we kneel down to pray thy will be done then our proud wills must break and lose themselves in love for thy dear sake teach us dear lord all that it means to say give us our daily bread when thus we pray we will be trustful when we understand nor grasp the law from out a brother's hand teach us dear lord all that it means to say 
forgive our trespasses when meek we pray forgive the word was made in paradise and this world's hope and faith within it lies teach us dear lord all that it means to say the words christ gave us when we kneel to pray for when we know and leave the meaning deep no heart will need to break no eyes to weep end of poem this recording is in the public domain Jack by Jean Blewett Read for LibriVox.org By Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Jack's dead and buried, it seems odd, A deep hole covered up with sod, A lying out there on the hill, And Jack, as never, could keep still, A sleepin' in it, Jack could race, And do it at a good old pace could sing a song and laugh so hard that I could hear him in our yard when he was half a mile away why not another boy could play like him or run or jump so high or swim no matter how he'd try and I can't get it through my head at all at all that Jack is dead Jack's mother didn't used to be so awful good to him and me for often when i'd go down there on saturdays when it was fair to get him out to fish or skate she'd catch me hangin round the gate and look across at some old hen and tell me go off home again it's not the same thing for boys she'd say a hanging round the creek all day you go off home and do your task no jack can't go you needn't ask and when he got in scrapes why she would up and lay it on to me and wish i'd live so far away jack couldn't see me every day but last night when i done the chores it seemed so queer like out of doors I kept a listenin' all the while, and looking down the street a mile, I couldn't bear to go inside. The house is lonesome since he died. The robber book we read by turns is lying there, and no boy learns all by himself, cause he can't tell how many words he'll miss or spell, unless there's somebody lookin' on to laugh at him when he gets done a neighbor woman's sure to come a visiting a feller's home and talkin when they look at me bout how thick us used to be a stealing off from school and such and askin do i miss him much till i sneak off outdoors you see they just can't let a feller be well i walked down the road a bit smith's dog came out i throwed at it and do you know it never howled same as it always did or growled it seemed to say why jim's alone now i wonder where's that other one afore i knew it i was down way at the other end of town a hanging round in the old way for some one to come out and play there wasn't no one there to look so i slipped into our old nook i found his knife hid in the grass where we'd been zulus at the pass the can of bait and hook and line were lying with the ball of twine and jim 
I seem to hear him say, the fish will suffer some today. Twas more than I could just stand then, I got up to go off home when someone kissed me on the cheek and hugged me so I couldn't speak. You won't believe it, like as not, but twas Jack's mother and a lot of great big tears came stealing down right on my face she didn't frown a single bit kept saying low my blue-eyed boy i love you so of course i knew just right away that she meant jack my eyes are gray but jack he had the bluest eyes blue like you see up in the skies and shine that used to come and go one misses eyes like his you know and by and by she up and tried to tell me that she cried and cried a thinkin of the times that she had scolded jack and scolded me and other things that i won't tell to any one because oh well boys can't do much but they can hold tight on to secrets till they're old she's jack's relation that's why she feels kind of lovin like to me but when she called me her own lad oh say i felt just awful bad my head it went round in a whirl i up and cried just like a girl but say if jack did see us too he laughed a little don't you know for if i'd ever brag around that I'd lick some one safe and sound. He'd laugh and say, Jim, hold your jaw. You know you're scared to death of Mall. Oh, I'd give all this world away if I could hear him laugh today. I get so lonesome, it's so still, and him out sleepin' on that hill, for nothing seems just worth the while a doing up the old style cause everything we used to do seemed always just to need us too my throat aches till i think till crack i don't know why it must be jack there ain't no fun there ain't no stir his mother well tis hard on her but she can knit and sew and such oh she can't miss him half so much End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Pledge by Jean Blewett. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. I sit alone tonight. Today our two roads meet. You help me find the right, and I will not forget. I'm pledged to do my best with lips that will not lie, to strive with mind and heart as all the days go by. You've looked so strong and bold when all was done and said. You have a heart of gold, and I have one of lead. Some day I'll climb the height, if fortune fair be tied. I only know tonight the world is strangely wide. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Blue Eyed Bess by Jean Blewett. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. But let us argue for a space before we say that long goodbye. Now heaven grant us store of grace, we are so human, you and I. Full well you know the old-time way, will easiest seem unto our feet. Full well you know with yesterday, no fair tomorrow may compete. Then some day, Bess, we will be old, think you our heart's content will stay, with bleak December or grown bold will they not race back into may look not upon his acres wide but think how weary life would be 
your body walking at his side your soul back in the spring with me why will you try to cheat poor love who only asks you for his own his blindness should compassion move yet what compassion have you shown say love take all i have to give for nothing would i keep from thee we'll walk together while we live and thou shalt make the path for me the pretty blush is on your face we will not say that long good-bye now heaven grant us store of grace we are so human you and i end of poem this recording is in the public domain the courtier's lady by jean blewett read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c my lady's face is proud and fair my lady's eyes are gray she goeth out to take the air on every sunny day my lady wears a gown of blue that falleth to her feet all broidered o'er with pearls like dew and daisies shy and sweet my lady wears a hat of silk that fairy hands did spin and strings it hath as white as milk to tie beneath her chin my lady wears upon her breast a knot of ribbon gay but who her heart doth love the best my lady will not say and oh the jewels rich and rare do make the eye grow dim that sparkle in her powdered hair and on her fingers slim my lady wears a satin shoe with silver buckle wide a tiny thing from heel to toe that is my joy and pride my lady wears upon her face a little touch of scorn no fuller share of pride and grace hath any woman born my lady's face is sweet and fair my lady's eyes are gray she goeth out to take the air on every sunny day end of poem this recording is in the public domain the rustic's lassie by jean blewett read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c my lassie's face is fair to see my lassie's eyes are blue and always do they tell to me her heart is fond and true there's silk too on my lassie's head as yellow as the gold and woven is each shining thread into a braided fold but never fairy's hands did spin silk like my lassie's hair as for the strings beneath her chin i would not have them there lest one dear dimple growing shy that every one should see within those silken strings would try to hide itself from me my lassie wears a gown of white which needs no pearls to deck with lace like cobweb soft and light full gathered at her neck my lassie wears upon her breast no knot of ribbon gay forget-me-nots she loves the best plucked at the dawn of day my lassie's feet like two white mice go slipping through the grass and all the dewdrops think them nice and kiss them as they pass the satin shoe with buckled dressed is richer it may be but if the truth must be confessed not half so good to see my lassie's face is fair to see my lassie's eyes are blue and always do they tell to me her heart is fond and true end of poem this recording is in the public domain
Her Dower by Jean Blewett Read for LibriVox.org By Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. One angel brought a birthday gift Straight from the courts above Now soft thy voice and bright thy smile For I do give thee love Another came on snowy rings tipped with a golden light i bring the gift of purity to keep thy dear heart white the third had music in his tones i bring thee courage strong to guard both love and purity from what would do them wrong for tender feet must press the paths the crowded paths of life and tender souls must meet the shock and din of passion's strife walk thou unmoved through perils great while we thy strength applaud with courage true i crown to-day the fairest work of god end of poem this recording is in the public domain Malverine by Jean Blewett, read for LibriVox.org, by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. So still you sleep upon your bed, so motionless and slender, it cannot be that you are dead, my little maiden tender. You were no creature pale and meek, that death should hasten after. The red rose bloomed upon your cheek, your lips were made for laughter. To you the great world was a place that care might never stay in, a playground built by God's good grace for happy folks to play in. You made your footpath by lace flowers, O oh, happy little maiden. The sky was full of shine and showers, the wind was perfume laden. I came and found you sweet and wild, love, only love could tame you, to think, O oh pretty thoughtless child, that greedy death must claim you. Your dimpled hands are folded now above the snowy bosom, the lilies creep and kiss your brow, O oh tender broken blossom. The white lids hide the eyes so clear, so witching and beguiling. But as my tears fall on you, dear, your lips seem softly smiling. And do you feel that it is home, the city we call heaven? Ah, were they glad to have you come, my little maid of seven? Methinks when you stand all in white to learn each sweet new duty, some eye will note with keen delight your radiance and beauty and when your laughter softly rings out where god's streets do glisten the angels fair will fold their wings and still their song to listen end of poem this recording is in the public domain song of the wind by jean blewett Sung for LibriVox.org by Iswa in Belgium in August 2017. Oh, wind, you come singing, singing gaily about the eaves. I think you are bringing, bringing the secret of the leaves secrets you learned in the may time down in the wood so cool learned in the night time and day time by bank and brook and pool O oh, wind you go shrilling shrilling over the chimneys high 
While the clouds are softly spilling, Rain on the gardens dry, This autumn the wild newcomer Has taught you how to sing, But the voice of the sweet dead summer through it all seems to ring O oh, wind, you are railing, railing Tis the voice of a shrew Wearied at length and failing Then beginning anew Here you come Sighing, sighing, down to my casement wide, a moment and you are flying, away in peak and pride. I love your chasing and panting, I love the melody that you go so gaily chanting to earth and sky and sea. Our birds go southward soaring when signs of frost appear you with your sighing and roaring sing to us all the year end of poem this recording is in the public domain the richer man by Jean Blewett, read for LibriVox.org, by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. You know how it is, you have had the gain, the sweetness and pleasures of life, I the fruitless striving, the heat to attain, the toil, the failure, the strife. Then we chance to come by the will of faith, to the warm of one woman's eyes and fate decrees it is not too late to give me a great surprise and the woman turns with matchless grace the bloom of her tender cheek and her red lips smiling her glorious face her glance so lovingly and meek to me to the penniless bankrupt one and I find my portion at last, and heaven as real when all is done as the hell of the bitter past. The glories of earth are but chaff in the wind, the riches of earth but a song. Now listen, my brother, I think you will find you have tried to do me a wrong. You had all that to me had been denied. I starved while you feasted well. You have fame a hundred things beside. You have watched your coffers swell. Yet when we come by the will of fate to the warmth of one woman's eyes, and fate declares it is not too late to give me a great surprise, you come with the weight of your yellow gold and trappings of your success. You come with your bearing, courtly and bold, you woo in your haughtiness. You try to dazzle her eyes of blue, and you try to steal for yourself the heart of a woman good and true. Go, be content with your pelf. Learn there are treasures you may not grasp, joys you must surely miss. The hand you court lies in my clasp. The lips are my own to kiss. A penniless fellow, you used to say, own to the truth if you can. We stand here together this summer's day, and I am the richer man. 
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. His Wife and Boy by Jean Blewett Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Love is a myth which men create from vapors of the heart and brain. Thus far the poet grave did get, then from a smile could not refrain. Someone was singing, he could hear, each word so low and sweet and clear. By baby bunting, papa's gone a-hunting, to get a little rabbit skin, to wrap the baby bunting in. Right well he knew that picture fair might set a stoic heart aglow, for it was such a bonny pair, so gently rocking to and fro. The old song was a foolish thing, yet it seemed good to hear her sing. By baby bunting, papa's gone a-hunting, to get a little rabbit skin, to wrap his baby bunting in. The sunshine would be creeping down, upon her hair of golden brown and farther yet that it may peep at her awake at him asleep and both were his to have and hold how runs the foolish song so old by baby bunting papa's gone a-hunting to get a little rabbit skin to wrap the baby bunting in but he must to his hunting go a cloak this pen of his must win, as soft as silk and white as snow, to wrap the baby bunting in. Strange that his poem, deep and strong, should wait upon a nursery song. By baby bunting, papa's gone a-hunting, to get a little rabbit skin, to wrap the baby bunting in. Love is a myth that men create. From vapors of the heart and brain. O oh, pen, I fear you lied of late. Hark, softly rings the old refrain. By baby bunting, papa's gone a-hunting, To get a little rabbit skin, To wrap the baby bunting in. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. She Just Keeps House for Me by Jean Blewett, sung for LibriVox.org by Iswa in Belgium in August 2017. She is so winsome and so wise, she sways us at her will, and oft the question will arise, what mission does she fill? And so I say with pride untold, and love beyond degree this woman with a heart of gold she just keeps house for me for me she just keeps house for me a full content dwells in her face she's quite in love with life and for a title wears with grace the sweet old-fashioned wife and so i say with pride untold and love beyond degree this woman with the heart of gold she just keeps house for me for me she just keeps house for me what though i toil from morn till night what though i weary grow a spring of love and dear delight doth ever softly flow and so i say with pride untold and love beyond degree the woman with a heart of gold 
She just keeps house for me. Our children climb upon her knee and lie upon her breast, and our mission seems to me the highest and the best. And so I say with pride untold and love beyond degree. This woman with a heart of gold. She just keeps house for me. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Love's Humility by Jean Blewett. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. I love her, yes the younger of them said i think her beautiful beyond compare how proudly does she carry that small head with all its wealth of silky night black hair and then her warm red mouth i see it now was it not made for kisses and her chin so round and firm the smooth unwrinkled brow each cheek with such a cunning dimple in she is so piquant winsome fair and good i could not choose but love her if i would did i not love her well think you her charms would move my pulse in this delicious way and make me long to fold her in my arms hold her love's prisoner by day and night Tis joy to think of her white-lidded eyes, So full of dreams, so full of tender speech, Her slender form, and yet it were not wise, To be too rash, come, let your wisdom teach, She is so piquant, winsome, fair, and good, I could not choose but love her if I would, I fain would make her all my own, this maid i love her well but would it be quite right to risk so much at times i grow afraid to lift her up to such a dizzy height you know my prospects and you know my pride it is a weighty matter to be wed and yet i only know when at her side that life is rich in joy and bliss we said she is so piquant winsome fair and good i could not choose but love her if i would i could not choose but love her if i would you boast but if you loved her you would say i would not choose but love her if i could so answered him the old man stern and gray there's passion in your words, but you have fears. Your high position, ah, you are afraid. Boy, learn this truth from one of sober years. The man who really, truly loves a maid knows only two things well, no more, no less. Her matchless worth, his own unworthiness. End of poem this recording is in the public domain. Our Host and His House by Jean Blewett Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Nay, rail not, dear, at time in such rude way. Tis scarcely fair since he has been our host for such a while and rail not at the world this gray old ivy covered manor house wherein his long has entertained us both since we have broken bread with him danced in his halls let us not talk of him in slighting way what though he has not given lavishly for daily use the rich things in his store rare things grow common quite 
when they are used in common way you know this for yourself and delicacies lose their flavor when the palate tires of them but ah on state occasions has he not been prodigal o wine of life that he has poured for us poured freely till it ran the goblet o'er and trickled down in little rosy streams believe me dear for all his length of beard so snowy white his vulnerable air enough of youth lurks in his bosom still to make him lenient with foolishness for often he has stolen off and left a standing heart to heart and has he not sometimes stilled all his house lest we should wake too soon from some rapt dream of tenderness then too for playthings he has given us hours filled full enough of rapture unalloyed to cover every day of all the years with common happiness if properly spread out as for this gray old world it is not half so murk so wanting in all light all glow and warmth as some declare as we oft picture to ourselves my dear it has its windows looking east and west it has its sunset and its morning gold the trouble is we will look toward the east at even tide and toward the sombre west when heaven is shaking down upon the world a lusty infant day and so we miss the glory of the sunset and the dawn End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Mother's Story by Jean Blewett. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. She told a wonderful story, the mother so fair and good, of the deep and strange old mystery men have never understood it was such a pretty story i wove it into a rhyme to read to myself when the skies were gray at the end of summer time now listen she said my children to every word that i say dear marjorie share the hearth-rug with your restless sister may and you my lad with the great dark eyes may share the couch with me while the baby girl with doll in arms shall sit upon mother's knee your faces change as i carry your thoughts through the ebb and flow of someone's joys and someone's hopes and i love to watch the glow in Marjorie's eyes as we talk of elves in their wild and wanton glee, when they make the dim old forest ring with the sound of revelry. But May cares only to listen when I tell some quaint home tale. She likes a cot on a wooded hill and flocks of sheep in the vale. While you, my lad, with the dreamy eyes, you love the prose and the rhyme the deeds of daring the deeds of might of good king arthur's time to-day may ask me a question and i've pondered it for hours god's acre she said is full of bloom do the dead folks turn to flowers there's a tender story my children that may comfort you some day when mother sleeps in God's acre and the flowers blossom gay, the soft-voiced angels of life and love they whisper to Christ one day, We pray thee that when one fair and good in the earth is laid away, that we in the golden dawn may go alone where the sleeper lies, and sing in the solemn silence, 
the songs learned in paradise answered christ answered christ go sing till comes springing up up from the sod beneath the lily white as a ransom soul the rose with its fragrant breath a silence fell on the little group there were tears in marjorie's eyes it was a wonderful story and mother was oh so wise then the wee girl clapped her dimpled hands and said in her loving way when you turn to a posy mamma i'll water you every day it was such a pretty story i wove it into a rhyme to read to myself when the skies were gray at the end of summer time end of poem this recording is in the public domain in lover's lane by jean blewett read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c o oh, ranting bully with clamorous breath o oh, vandal why come you down from the north with frost in your breath and wrath in your voice and force in your arms to level and toss you rush through the wood and threaten the trees the giants of oak of beech and of elm playmates of yours ere age had o'ertaken stolen their vigor their sap and their life the tender child trees the slender child trees you worry you beat you fling to the earth lithe and supple are they to defy you swiftly they spring up as soon as you pass trembling a little with fear and anger but whole and unhurt the slender young things it is not enough that you bend and you break and make you a path wherever you go but you must enter this quiet old lane shut out from the world by lattice of vines where's eve pretty eve so prim and demure is walking with someone taking the air you rest behind them plotting new mischief rest till a soft hush falls down on the world rest till the growing things listen and laugh thinking you gone to your lair in the north then you begin to stir and to mutter growing in anger till big with your wrath on you come rushing vandal how can you liberties take with a maiden so fair eve as you walk so primly beside him keeping your distance nor heeding his size chin tilted forward eyes straight before you parasol swinging in one little hand blue gown all flounces ribbons a flutter dainty and winsome and proud as a queen there is no time the boorish thing takes you you and your ruffles your ribbons and curls you and your primness your blushes and airs straight to the arms of the man at your side you have no conscience swaggering north wind else would you hasten and leave them alone why must you push her yet nearer to him buffet and beat her you ruffian strong she has to hide her face on his bosom while you go whirling in ecstasy round then you loosen her bronze hair and fling it warm and electric up over his cheek hair soft and shiny full of allurement tempting a mortal to feel of its gold down you go soberly over the fields making believe you have left them for good driving the cattle and scaring the flocks shaking the cedars that stand on the hill then when she loosens herself from his grasp laughing and blushing as red as a rose back you come flying on mischief intent pleased to torment the fair maid in the lane oh how you buffet her boar that you are 
oh how you flutter her garments abroad clutch at her flounces so pretty and neat worry the ribbons that hang at her waist then growing fiercer you roar and you rage whirling and twirling to show off your strength pay no attention to prayer or mishap drive her to shelter again in his arms watching so closely the glances she gives wondering greatly how much she regrets all that has happened since prim and demure out from the farmhouse she started at noon maidens are queer things you laugh to yourself hiding their faces and owning to naught why must she whimper she's glad to be there glad to be holding so closely to him glad to feel round her his caretaking arms glad to be listening to all that he tells glad that i rumpled her shiny bronze hair making her fairer in somebody's eyes glad that i thrashed out her primeness and pride glad she'll not own it mark her distress now oh but these maidens are curious things listen old north wind listen and peer you have no manners no conscience no shame words of the lovers you greedily seize seize and go shrieking them out to the world she's an angel so fair and so tender too good for mortal the loveliest best oh you prying inquisitive meddler one thing you miss though the sweetest of all not even a breath of love's first warm kiss is wasted on you o boar of the north end of poem this recording is in the public domain o last days of the year by jean blewett read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c o last days of the year she whispered low you fly too swiftly past ah you might stay a while a little while do you not know what tender things you bear with you away i'm thinking sitting in the soft gloom here of all the riches that were mine the day there crept down on the world the soft new year a rosy thing with promise filled and gay but twelve short months ago a little space in which to lose so much a whole life's wealth of love and faith youth and youth's tender grace things that are wont to go from us by stealth laughter and blushes and the rapture strong the clasp of clinging hands the burning kiss the joy of living and the glorious song that drew its sweetness from a full heart's bliss o gladness great o wealth of tenderness that were my own one little year ago a bankrupt i gone faith gone warm caress gone love gone youth gone all she whispered low o last days of the year you take away the riches that i held so close and dear go not so swiftly stay a little stay with one poor bankrupt last days of the year end of poem this recording is in the public domain back on the farm by jean blewett Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. I'll tell you what I wish I was when the days like these arrive and spring puts all her gagnas on and all the world's alive. I wish I was a boy again, a boy back on the farm and watching all the grown stuff and cowslips getting warm a playing round the whole long day as happy as a lark 
and never out of mischief once from daylight until dark with such a lot of things to hear and such a lot to see and my dog rover at my heels to keep me company a watching the big sun go down behind the tree tops high and wishing i could climb the one that reached up to the sky a listening to the katydids a jawing in the lane and sniffing up the earthy smell that comes before a rain laughing to see the white wooled sheep come skipping down the hill and feeling such a heap of joy i couldn't quite keep still and by and by a dozing off and waking up to hear my mother say come in the house tis past your bedtime dear a longing takes me on these days when all the world gets warm a longing just to be a boy a boy back on the farm end of poem this recording is in the public domain He Meditates on the Critic by Jean Blewett Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Criticism is a tonic, very healthy in effect, wrote he, and my verse, Byronic, did most ruthlessly reject. He's a villain, deep politic, bitter things these tonics all manufactured by the critic from his mighty store of gall end of poem this recording is in the public domain jacinth by jean blewett read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c we have been something more than friends, Jacinth. You know that well, yet now you say, my friend, I give you welcome home in such cold way. I scarce believe it is Jacinth who speaks, Jacinth who used to give, but let it pass. The new year finds me with a heavy heart. I come to seek the girl I used to know. The happy, trusting, tender girl, and lo, I find her grown into a woman proud, With richer dower of beauty for her own, But far less lovable than my Jacinth. Jacinth, we both are changed, I think. Derwent, it is not so. I am not of the sort that gets new friends, Like fashions, for each season as it comes. Jacinth, hark to the bells, a happy year, Derwent. Give me your hand and wish as much for me. Derwent, you wish me happiness and yet deny my heart the highway to it. Jacinth, happiness, I would that words might win the elusive thing to carry with thee all way. How I would wheedle, she cannot suit her step. To ours for long she weareth of our slow and sober pace, and flitteth where she will. Now near, now far away, we search in vain, and when we go with downbent head and eyes, tear filled, lo, on a sudden shineth round, our feet her rainbow hues and to our breast she creepeth down with eager willingness derwent there's sweetness in thy words such sweetness as wells up from fragrant things though they be dead a violent's breath lives longer than its bloom so in this tender wish of thine i read once on a time thy love was mine jacinth and peace, sweet peace, whose softest note can drown the cry of bitterness. Oh, I would have her keep 
thy company go with thee all the day sleep on thine heart from dusk till rosy dawn and all such pretty joys be born to thee as come with fragrant breath and dewy lips and subtle tender touch to keep our love towards god and man a warm and living thing a happy year a happy happy year der went nay from the velvet heart of flower in bloom comes this last wave of sweetness my jacinth love is not dead in that white breast of thine o glad bells ring ye out to all the world a happy year a happy happy year end of poem this recording is in the public domain her first sleigh ride by jean blewett read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c all night the snowflakes sought the earth the snowflakes big and white they covered up the meadows brown they bent the bushes slight at morn the sun with wondrous pomp came climbing o'er the hill and lent a thousand beauties to the world so fair and still ruth at the old man's window stood a wonder in her gaze the earth was turned to fairyland she cried out in amaze her cousin ronald laughed and said this is no fairyland but a canadian landscape clothed in beauty wild and grand in georgia you have not like this ice snow and wintry gale the southern air is warm and soft the southern girls are pale not pale the face she turned to him in each soft cheek the red flamed up you need not say a word against the south she said i envy not your rosy maids their color or their land i love the warmth of our blue sky the bloom on every hand far more than all your snow-capped hills and forests ghostly white and mournful winds that love to play a dirge both day and night thereat his father kindly soul as ever put to sleep both saint and sinner in the pew with sermon long and deep bade him not tease a sister so come make your peace straight away then harness and bring out black bess for on this glorious day my ruth shall have a rare good treat a sleigh ride do you hear the air will warm up towards noon for see the sky is clear come you should love each other well so near of kin you are my child in ronald you shall have a brother good and true no brother i the graceless youth did hastily exclaim and ruth affronted bade him wait until she made such claim black bess came prancing from her stall so smooth so shiny skinned give her the rein and she would race as swiftly as the wind she tossed her slender head and pawed the snowdrifts as she stood and shook her bells until they chimed so eager was her mood whoa bess be patient for a while said ronald as with care he tucked the robe so thick and warm about his cousin fair then off they sped away away the snowbirds flew afraid the frost came in the air to touch the cheeks of man and maid the yellow sunbeams raced with them and made a glow and gleam put rainbow colors on the bridge that spanned the frozen stream a white highway they followed down into the valley wide and wider yet the sun-kissed hills that rose on either side black bess made all her chiming bells flow music clear and sweet as on she sped and on and on a handsome thing and fleet but when the forest wide was reached 
she took a sober pace as though to give them time to note the beauty of the place the giant heads were crowned with snow the giant limbs were dressed and close about the giant girths the snowy drifts were pressed and ruth a fair and radiant ruth said softly this is grand old winter makes his home i trow in this wide northern land you lacked in courtesy to-day but this ride makes amends so ronald now a truce i say let us be loyal friends no friend am i he said and laughed to note her look of pride what boors you are here in the north the angry maiden cried and now for home and supper warm will need them without doubt homeward they flew black bess as fresh as when she started out the sun with all his gorgeous train went down behind the crest of one tough hill but left a glow of crimson in the west so soft so pure the old world lay as the young knight came down for covered all her garden sere her meadows bare and brown he spoke at length i will not be your brother or your friend but i will be your lover true till life and love shall end the blue eyes looked into the brown he bent his head full low he may have kissed her tender mouth but this no one can know ho ho this winter air is fine the old man cried with glee did you enjoy my treat your cheeks are rosy as can be i did ruth owned and stretched her hands out to the cheerful blaze i like canadian scenery i like canadian ways end of poem this recording is in the public domain His Own Little Black-Eyed Lad by Jean Blewett Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. It is time for bed, so the nurse declares, But I slip off to the nook, the cozy nook at the head of the stairs, Where Daddy's reading his book. I want to sit here a while on your knee, I say as I toast my feet and i want you to pop some corn for me and give me an apple sweet i tickle him under the chin just so and i say please can't i dad then i kiss his mouth so he can't say no to his own little black-eyed lad you can't have a pony this year at all says my stingy uncle joe after promising it and there's the stall fixed ready for it you know one can't depend on his uncles i see it's daddies that are the best and i find mine and climb on his knee as he takes his smoke and rest i tickle him under the chin just so and i say please can't i dad then i kiss his mouth so he can't say no to his own little black-eyed lad i want to skate and oh what a fuss for fear i'll break through the ice this woman that keeps our house for us she isn't what i call nice she wants a boy to be just like a girl to play in the house all day keep his face all clean and his hair in curl but dad doesn't think that way I tickle him under the chin just so, and I say, please can't I, Dad? Then I kiss his mouth so he can't say no to his own little black-eyed lad. You're growing so big, says my dad to me, soon be a man, I suppose, too big to climb up on your old dad's knee and toast your ten little toes then his voice it gets the funniest shake and oh but he hugs me tight i say when i can't keep my eyes awake 
let me sleep with you to-night i tickle him under the chin just so and i say please can't i dad then i kiss his mouth so he can't say no to his own little black-eyed lad end of poem this recording is in the public domain Be Good and Glad by Jean Blewett Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Why do you sigh as days go by And carry such a weight of sadness? To wistful eyes the hot tears rise, Yet life holds store of joy and gladness. The sunbeams gay are out today, then worry not about to-morrow nor shrink nor start with beating heart nor grave fears for the future borrow let us not weep when shadows deep about our pathway seem to gather but go our way without dismay for children we the lord our father i hold there must be faith and trust for others sins a full forgiving the greeting glad for sick and sad if we would taste the joys of living the sunlight streams the old world dreams and by and by the stars will glimmer the lamps that swing when earth was young yet have not older grown or dimmer and blind we are or we would see this lesson in the skies above us that all the way by night or day god watchful is since he doth love us end of poem this recording is in the public domain the making up by jean blewett read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c we quarrel and make up again and then some day we quarrel and forget straight away the making up the first harsh word comes tremblingly we shame to fling and forth ah me twill wound and sting what we hold dear ashamed and penitent we cry forgive and kiss there is a wealth of joy and bliss in making up the next harsh word comes easier till by and by we think it foolishness to cry for peace again the discord swells in every line and soon we grow so used to it we hardly know the once sweet air we quarrel and make up again and then some day we quarrel and forget straight away the making up end of poem this recording is in the public domain